Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church, Red Hill, Pennsylvania, today. Today is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, and our theme for worship this Communion Sunday is the living bread given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. A quick note about communion. To receive communion today, we will be using these pre-filled containers, holding both a little grape juice and a small piece of bread. Um, they are being given out in the back of the sanctuary. Does everyone who wishes to receive communion have one at this point? If not, we have extras in the back. And by the way, don't open them now, okay? But the instructions for doing so, we'll go over this at communion time as well. To access the bread, just put that side up, peel back the little foil on top, and receive the bread. And then turn the cup over to receive the grape juice. Once again, gently, carefully, peel back the foil and receive the grape juice. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God in memory of Elsie Rehack, presented by nieces and nephews. And the chancel flowers are given to the glory of God to celebrate the birth and life of Elsie Rehack, presented by nieces Nancy Yerger, Sandra Reeder, and Patricia Walter, and nephew James Mack and their families. And now let us continue our worship today by offering our confession to God and asking our Lord's forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Israel comes to greet the Savior. 
Jesus is glad to see that day. From him to much the peoples travel. God will show the way. God has spoken to the people. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. So then, putting away falsehood, let us let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather than, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling slander together with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Today's Gospel reading is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning with verse 35. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph? whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me, Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate in the the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This concludes our Bible readings for today. Good morning, guys. How are you today? Good. In today's Bible message, we hear how important it is to try to build each other up. Because it's very easy to say something or do something that knocks each other down. Let's show the folks at home how long it takes to build a tower out of these Jenga blocks.
See guys, it's a little harder to build the tower up, but with one false move, it comes crashing down. It's important, God wants us to work to build each other up. We have to be careful the words we use so we don't accidentally tear each other down. Thank you for helping show that today. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. <laughs> We're still here. I'm just on pause for a quick moment yet here. And now, welcome back, everyone. May the Spirit of God fill us with peace and with joy and lead us to faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The night that I was ordained a pastor, I knelt before the altar at St. John's Lutheran Church in Hudson, New York. That was part of the ordination rite, coming about halfway through the service, featuring the laying on of, of hands. And the very next thing that I did was to ascend the steps leading up to the altar. It was a high altar there. And preside for the first time at Holy Communion. Stacks of silver colored trays filled with, remember all the little communion glasses, the real glasses, rested on the altar. The patent or the plate holding a treasure trove of these wafers and the chalice ready to be filled with wine stood before me. The bishop of our upper New York synod watched my every move from close observance. My fellow pastors likewise witnessed everything I was doing. And out there in the congregation sat my parents and my family, my friends, people from the congregations I would be going on to serve in Rensselaer County, and scores of parishioners from St. John's who had seen me grow up in the church and supported my journey towards ministry. And it was a very special moment, a holy moment, nerve-wracking moment too, okay? But more than anything else, a precious one. As our celebration of Holy Communion, our Lord's Supper always is. One of the things you and I have missed most during the long sweep of this pandemic is the opportunity literally to celebrate Holy Communion. And so we are grateful today to be able to do so. I'm the bread of life, Jesus declares. The crowds way back then, they all wanted to be fed by him, whatever they thought he meant by this claim he was making. And we want to be fed today as well by the grace that he brings to our lives. Living bread. That's what he calls himself. I'm living bread. Which, folks, is not something you find every day. Nor is it something you find in every aisle of the supermarket, this living bread. Yet this living bread sure comes to us in a variety of ways. I've served eight different churches over the course of the years, and each church has had its own unique way of administering the sacrament. And really, you think about it, it's amazing how complex it can be serving a little bread and a little wine to people. While, for instance, Holy Communion typically takes place in a church building, like this right here, it doesn't always. I've provided communion in a host of nursing homes for residents, both in large number or with only a few present. I've traveled to countless people's homes with my trusty little communion kit in hand to offer the sacrament. I've gathered with parishioners on the shores of a very breezy reservoir early on Easter morning, only to see that strong gust of wind take and distribute the wafers way before I intended them to be distributed. On other Easter mornings, I celebrated the Eucharist at ecumenical services on the second floor of an old, supposedly haunted museum with about a hundred worshipers and a few costumed mannequins looking on. Likewise, the situations for receiving the meal, they vary as well. I mean, I've watched 
brides and grooms and their wedding guests joyfully feast on the bread and the wine. Yet I've also spoon-fed the elements to the dying as they wait to make their way to heaven. <laughs> I, I've smiled as young children receiving communion for the first time sort of pucker their lips and make some incredible expressions and shake their heads and tasting that wine for the first time. I've placed bread in people's hands as they've filed past the casket of their family member or friend at a funeral. And, hey, of course, the means for receiving the Eucharist have also changed over the decades. Doesn't seem all that long ago, at least not to me, that, remember, we all drank out of the same common cup for communion. I've used homemade bread, store-bought bread, white bread, wheat bread, rye bread full of seeds, wafers, gluten-free wafers, and a few other doughy delights, all to accompany those words, the body of Christ given for you. I've communed people kneeling at the altar, standing in receiving lines, or waiting in wheelchairs. You see, there's just no end to the possibilities for celebrating Holy Communion. But again, friends, what makes it this living bread? What makes it able to satisfy our hunger in a way that not only gets us through the day, but that gives us life? Okay, listen up to Martin Luther this time, okay? Listen up to what Martin Luther has to say about the Holy Meal. And dig with me for a few moments into not the small catechism, but the large catechism, which he also wrote, which explores more fully the meaning of the sacrament in our daily lives. It is the word, Martin Luther writes, it is the word which distinguishes communion from mere bread and wine. The word of Christ, that is. I am the bread of life. Feast on me, you can hear him telling the crowds that day. Feast on me. You'll never be hungry. You'll be filled with the things that count with love, mercy, kindness, acceptance. Eat of this bread, and you will not die, he adds. You will not only have life now in following the Christ, but an eternal life in the embrace of our good shepherd. And faithfully, friends, take hold of that word of Christ's promise and you will be raised up to a new life. Yes, on the last day. But even in these days, you will be blessed with peace, strength, and joy in Christ. And Luther concludes, if you take the word away from these elements, you got nothing but bread and wine. But if the words remain, that is, that promise of Christ, then in virtue of them, they are truly the body and blood of Christ. What it boils down to is this. We are about to feast on truly living bread doesn't just nourish. It gives life. It doesn't just provide some essential vitamins, nutrients, and minerals. It offers forgiveness, healing, reconciliation. It doesn't just satisfy our hopes and needs for an hour or two. It assures us of a right, trusting, and lasting relationship with God. Communion, as we all know, can assume a myriad of forms, but it finds its power in the word of Christ. And then it becomes a life-giving meal. My body, broken for you. My blood, shed for you. My life, given for you, for us. Live in my grace, then. 
live in faith and with all hope, and live in love. Be my family. Be my church. Amen. And may this peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, for new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of our gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the health and well-being of creation, 
for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, for judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice, for corrections officers and prison chaplains that they would deal mercifully for those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of loved ones, for all who are sick, especially those on our prayer list. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our community of faith gathered around your table, for our sisters and brothers in neighboring congregations celebrating your holy meal, for your saints around the world knit together in your family of Christ, God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We lift those, these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends here and at home, thank you for your continuing support of our ministry the good things we do to share the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ here and at and through St. Paul's. Your gifts are always appreciated. And may we take a moment now to ask God's blessings upon the gifts that we bring today. God of love, you call us beloved children and fill us with your grace. Receive our lives and the gifts that we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As our Lord has taught us to pray, I invite you to pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Friends, this is the time we take hold of a little self-contained communion um, containers with the bread side up. And at this point, just feel free to peel back the foil. And you may take the bread and just let it dissolve in your mouth. The body of Christ given for you. When you are ready, simply tip it over so that the grape juice side is up and carefully remove the foil. You may drink from it, the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, whether here in the sanctuary or at home, I hope our shared time of worship has once again nurtured your faith, stirred your spirits, strengthened you to go out and be the disciples of Christ another day, another week. And thank you so much for the honor of your presence. One announcement I'd just like to share with you, our cemetery association is looking for new members who will help with the maintenance of our cemetery. As you know, it is a large cemetery that we have here. The association meets on the third Monday of every month, at seven o'clock. Um, your help with overseeing the upkeep and development of our cemetery will be greatly appreciated. If you are interested in serving in this ministry, please talk with me and I'll get you in connection with the appropriate people. Thank you. And now may God, our creator, fill you with love, grace you with peace in our Lord Jesus Christ, and bless you with the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.